I vividly remember my first meeting as the newly arrived American ambassador in Moscow in the summer of 2005 with then President Putin. And first meeting took place in the Kremlin, which as a number of you know, is built on a scale that's meant to intimidate visitors, especially new American ambassadors. So you walk through these huge ornate halls down long corridors, you come to the end of one hall and there are these two-story bronze doors. You're kept waiting there for a little while just to let all this sink in. Um, and then the doors crack open and out comes Vladimir Putin, who, despite his bare-chested persona, is not that intimidating in the flesh. He's about five, six, but he carries himself with great self-assurance. Um, and so he comes walking through the door and as is his wont, looks you dead in the eye. And before I got a word out of my mouth, let alone handed over the letter I had from George W. Bush, he said, you Americans need to listen more. You can't have everything your own way anymore. We can have effective relations, but not just on your terms. In my experience, that was vintage Vladimir Putin. It was not subtle. It was almost defiantly charmless. But it was a very direct message, and it reflected the fact that, in my experience, Putin is a very combustible combination of grievance and ambition and insecurity, all wrapped up together. Um, and he draws, you know, in many ways, I think you, you have to, to understand the smoldering aggressiveness, which we've seen from Putin's Russia in recent years. It helps to understand Boris Yeltsin's Russia. When I first served in Moscow in the early 1990s, this was a Russia that, despite all the hopes that came with the end of communism and the end of the Cold War, you know, that was mixed with a sense of humiliation, with the decline in Russia's major power status. The Russian economy was flat on its back. You know, Russia was a place that, where chaos and disorder were sometimes the dominant features. I remember in that first tour in, in the embassy in Moscow going to Chechnya, in the winter of 1994-95, the first Chechen war. Um, and I drove into the capital of Grozny, and you know the 40 square blocks in the center of that city were flattened by Russian bombardment. It looked like photographs you see of Dresden in 1945. Most of the civilians killed in that bombardment, the Russian general who accomplished it said that his purpose was to make the rubble bounce. Most of the civilians who were killed were elderly ethnic Russian pensioners because they couldn't get out. But, but driving into Grozny, the Red Army that I saw, which you know at the height of the Cold War was supposed to be able to reach the English Channel in 48 hours, looked more like a street gang, <coughs> albeit a street gang with nuclear weapons. But you know there was a sense of hum humiliation that people of Putin's generation, and he was professionally trained in the Russian security services, um, weighed heavily on them. Putin, in my experience, is, is kind of an apostle of payback. 